In the furthest northwest corner of the park um, lies an area called Kishnin. And um, if you look at the park map that you get at the gate, um, that one's not going to have it on there. But if you look at any other one, like USGS or National Geographic, you'll find the little Kishinin section. And um, anyways, that uh, starts as a continuation of the old Inside North Fork Road and goes all the way up along the North Fork of the Flathead to the boundary, then across, and um, actually there's another little spur that goes up to the international boundary again, up Kishinin Creek drainage. And then, um, then finally, the Kintla Fire Trail drops you down to the Boulder Pass Trail along Kintla Lake. So I did this with my friend John Singer and um, it was really fun because he actually used to run the customs, um, he used to be one of the guys that ran the customs up in uh, the, what's called Trail Creek, um, which is now no longer open. I think Border Patrol uses that primarily. But um, so it was really fun hiking with him because he was able to sh shed some light on some of the structures and that kind of stuff that you come across on the trail. Um, but uh, anyways, you start out right where the road kind of turns to head towards Kintla and you just go ahead and park there at the trailhead and go through the old burn area. And it's really nice because you uh, can see there's just some nice boggy areas, some open meadows, you know, looking down at the North Fork of the Flathead. And um, you just continue up and probably one of my most favorite things was just the variety of different types of terrain in here. And that, that was just really awesome. Um, you come on down to Starvation Creek first and one creek crossing and you can see that the old road used to have a, a bridge there which is no longer there but some of the old structure is there. And then as you move further up you can see um, there's actually used to be a cable trolley that would go across the river. And, um, and you can see some of the old remnants to that structure. And um, it actually would go across right there because there's an old post office, which is that dilapidated little structure across the creek. And um, anyways, you know, saw a couple bull elk hanging out um, by the river as we got ready to head on up and cross Kishnin Creek. Kishnin Creek is a little bit tricky. Um, first of all, in the springtime, it's uh, pretty fast and high. So you want to be careful and make sure you check this trail status report. But um, when you get to the, tree, the creek crossing, um, you want to go ahead and cross it up a little bit higher, um, not just go straight across. And then once you get across, um, make sure you look up, um, to, up to your right upstream um, for a little orange marker to go ahead and guide you instead of the old route, which is just straight across. After that, there's the Kishning Patrol Cabin, which is amazing. Like, I really loved it. It's got a cool front porch, and there's a, a few outbuildings, including um, the, uh, there's like a, there's a little horse stable over there and probably the coolest looking outhouse that is in the park. Um, it's just this log cabin looking guy and, um, anyways, just, um, just a couple more outbuildings and, uh, anyways, from there, it's kind of tricky. If you, from the patrol cabin to, if you just walk off the porch and head off to the left, yeah, um, that'll take you down to the river and actually the old trail. Um, if you come off the porch and take a right, um, you, and start heading um, kind of that northwesterly, you'll see um, the old um, North Fork Road trail up in there. And that's what you want to do if you want to head all the way up to the, um, up there to the border. And um, you know, from there, you just cross in some, uh, you know, kind of some swampy areas at first, and then you come to some sage meadows, and you know, some cottonwood and aspen stands, and you know, just really, really neat terrain until you get up to the old boundary of the United States and Canada. And um, this one doesn't have any markers, particularly, you can see some in the distance, but there's that signature big old swath cut there. And uh, so we headed back down towards the cabin and just a little bit north of the cabin we camped and then John went back to go run shuttle and I started moving across to head up the uh, Kishnin Creek Trail up to um, the boundary again. and. Uh, you know, this, this whole area is real wild. Lots of bear and wolf and moose and elk and deer and everything. So um, definitely bring bear spray. And probably in the springtime, it's a little bit muddy, but um, the trail this time was fantastic. As you can see, man, you've got like ridiculous swaths cut there. And um, you know, a lot of lodge pole stuff. And then, you know, as you start getting up a little bit closer to the border, there's these great meadows with some aspen stands and of course, the fall, they're just popping and, you know, just some cool stuff hanging out around 
in those meadows and uh, and then finally now this boundary just a little bit to the east of it there's a there's a marker that I was able to film and you can see a little treaty sign and all that kind of stuff but once again signature swath super cool anyways so you come back down into the uh, Kintla fire trail and um, that's a that's a really cool little trail um, and that that cuts right across Kishinine Creek and then um, and then you just kind of weave your way around and and um, I don't know I just really liked it popped up onto this larch some of these ridges that have really great larch stands on them and real nice and open and just cool and then um, and then you come over and it start this trail starts to get a little bit more socked in um, as you uh, start getting peaks of Starvation Creek and um, it's not as great little boggy in parts but finally it uh, you get down to the creek and cross that and then head on up to Starvation Ridge, little saddle there, and then um, start working your way down Boulder Pass Trail. And um, so I'm walking on Boulder Pass Trail along Kintla Lake right now, and uh, I have to say this trail was way better than I thought it was gonna be. Trail crew did a great job. Um, I know that they worked really hard on it this year, and it shows. Um, yeah, I mean, just there's a handful of things that I would try. I mean, I think it's like, a little bit under five miles, like 4.8 miles to get up to the patrol cabin. I would recommend that. That's a really cool walk along the river. And um, I, you know, July is probably gonna be pretty mosquito-y and that kind of stuff. So I don't know if I do it then, but man, late August, September, shoot, do it, get up there. Get up and look at all those, those really cool buildings and, you know, have lunch on the, on the porch. So yeah, so, that, so I definitely really like that. I mean, I liked a lot of these trails and I just kind of like the wild nature of of it up here and you know um, I'm hopefully going to do a little bit more research uh, about some of the crazy characters and, and and kind of an interesting little thing is I think this one was one of the first um, white man trails established up here because because of oil and uh, I think right just north of the border here was there's a the site of the first oil well um, this side of the Mississippi and if you've ever been to Kintla Lake um, and stayed at the Kintla campground or just had lunch there or whatever, you've noticed some uh, oil equipment in there. So this area definitely is really rich in those oil entries and stuff. So anyways, I'm gonna quit blabbing. Um, hope you enjoyed the images and uh, this is Kishining Creek area. I totally recommend to check it out. It's awesome. So a couple times ago, I was um, riding, driving the North Fork Road, and I thought, you know, I should probably carry like a hatchet or some sort of saw just in case there's some downfall. And of course, um, you know, whenever you have a good idea like that, you should act upon it because what ends up happening is, is that you end up having situations that look a lot like this. Oh, uh, so now we have John here sawing off this sweet log here. We happened to find a vehicle that had a saw in it, um, so we went ahead and we're, 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 we liberated it from their clutches. And um, so yes, yeah, so we had this guy, I mean, as you can see, there's no way that we would move this thing. There's the root and it just upended. About three o'clock today, it's about what, five o'clock now. And so here we go, here we have the other side. But I mean, there is no way that we would just break that. So anyways, there he is doing, doing some, uh, John's doing the number and then I'll go ahead and help him break it and move it so anyways Let that be a lesson to you that if you cruise the inside North Fork Road You might just want to throw something like that in there because you might be the only savior of yourself to get out or wait a long time <laughs>